Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ladies Power Lunch. Thank you so much for joining us. So today I am joined by very dear friend Akanke. You've met Akanke before if you've watched any of our um, recordings that are focused a little bit on the whole speaking side of things because Akanke has been sharing with us her wisdom and her brilliance as far as speaking goes. However, today she's here to talk to us a little bit about something completely different because she is a part of our upcoming Ladies Power Lunch anthology book called be the beacon and she's going to share with us a little bit of she's not going to tell us the whole thing guys you're going to have to go get the book okay but she's going to share with us a little bit about her contribution to the book and it's going to be a really really interesting discussion so stay tuned here with us in our beautiful zoom studios is also my dear friend lynn so before we get started lynn would you be kind enough to share with everybody who you are and what it is that you do certainly i've actually had the wonderful pleasure of uh, having a session with a concave before. So that was amazing and just reinforced my uh, vision and goals in life. Um, I am a wellness and lifestyle educator who just likes to help people feel better. Uh, I have solutions that can connect people with ways to age more gracefully, more comfortably, and, and just not have the aches and pains and maybe signs that they are aging, um, along with enjoying uh, wine in a better way, a clean craft way. So I just connect people to those things. And I have, I have had the opportunity to have your clean crafted wine. And thanks for sending me that text message this morning to remind me to take my collagen because I had forgotten. You know how sometimes you're like going and going and going and some things get kind of pushed by the wayside. So thanks, Lynn, for sending that message. It is important it to remember because it, it doesn't work if you don't take it. Exactly. It, how <laughs> could it, right? I uh, know, right? So thank you so much, Lynn. So Akanke, thanks for joining us today. I want to invite you to please share with everybody, who are you and what is your mission in the world at this time? What's your beacon? What's your reason for being the thing that lights you up, your Monday morning exciting thing? What is that? Davia, I'm a soul on a journey, and that's what we all are. And so uh, that's my highest identity for myself. I'm very much aware that I did not create myself. I did not create this universe. And um, therefore I'm at the mercy of the one who created this world and the universe and created me. So my mission is to first of all, stay in that awareness and to inspire others to have that same awareness. And within that awareness to help them and all of us live an inspired life because the one who created us has put in us a unique inclination, a unique talent, unique blueprint, unique desires, unique gifts, and a unique path and method of service to creation. So we're not here to live just for ourselves. We're here to remember the creator and to serve the creation in a way that's beautiful, that's meaningful, that's completely connected to who the creator has assigned us to be. And so I'm Akanke Rashid. My mission is to remind people to remember that we're on a divine journey from the creator back to the creator. And in the middle, it's all about remembering the creator and letting that remembrance inform, direct and inspire us in life. Oh, I love that so much. I feel as though that dovetails perfectly with the theme of our upcoming book, Be the Beacon, and also our upcoming summit, Grow Smarter, Be the Beacon, where we are going to be really exploring this idea that we're not just here randomly. This is not just 
just happening by chance, we have a mission. We're here for a reason. It is our beacon, the thing that is our passion, the thing that's lighting us up. The thing that we get up every morning and we're doing with our clients is important. I love so much that you're bringing this to the forefront. But quick question for you, Akanke. Why did you say yes to being a part of the Ladies Power Lunch Anthology, Be the Beacon? What was it about that title that spoke to you? I'm because I'm aware that I have been assigned to be a beacon, to be a light for others, um, to share my journey, what I've learned through my joys and my challenges, my experiences. I do realize that I have been given a unique opportunity throughout my life to experience certain things, to travel the world, to dive deep into understanding myself my um, and others and learning from others. And um, through that knowledge, through the knowledge gained, I feel like I've been around the world inwardly and externally. I've lived in different places and through those experiences and through diving deep into self-awareness and trying to really understand myself, my purpose, my connection with the world, with this life, this journey, that, um, that I, I am a beacon. And I also am aware that there's a light in all of us. I mean, the creator is the light, the one who illuminates all of us. So mm -hmm. there is within us, each one of us, a light as well. So my mission, getting back to that, is to use my light to help others to see their light. And so, um, and some of us are in touch with that light to a degree greater than others, but we all have that light. And some of us are given the mission to be the light to guide others and to whom much is given, much is required. Uh, you know, part of what we have to recognize is are we that light and stop running away from that because. Let's talk about that a little bit more, Akanke. I really think this is very juicy. And you know, Lynn, chime in too, because I feel the way you feel. I feel that we're all, every single one of us on this planet, beacons. I get into arguments with patients, legitimate arguments about the fact that I believe that we're all genius and we're all here with a mission and there's something specific that we're here to do and contribute to the whole. And some people are hesitant to take up that mantle of being a beacon. They might feel fair, fearful or they might feel as though they don't have what it takes to be a beacon. What do you have to say to somebody who's hesitant, somebody who's reluctant, somebody who is not even able to see how brightly their own light is shining? Well, I think first of all, we just have to accept the fact that by nature of being alive, that we have light within us, that our heart is filled with light. And to whatever degree we've been conditioned through our life to dive into that, to understand that, then it could be clouded. But just by birthright, innately, we all are light. And as I said earlier, there is a unique inclination in us that has either been nurtured or suppressed or damaged or illuminated. Our experiences have conditioned us. So I say to everyone, whether or not you believe it, you are a beacon and you have a mission and your purpose, part of your purpose is to discover that, to embrace that, to share that and to be in service to creation, to others, to your family. And that also reminds me to want to say that everybody's not going to be the light that is on the stage. Maybe you're the light for your children or for your community, for your husband or your mother, your father. There are different ways to share exactly. that. Light. Just find That's it and get in touch with it stage by stage because you know it happens in tears it happens in layers 
And it happens through awareness that. and through intentionality in terms of diving in to see, okay, am I light? And what is that light? And what am I inclined to do? What am I afraid of? And, and look into that fear to see if that fear is real and how to you know, dive into that and uncover that and to heal on anything. Because a lot of times in order to really express our light, we have to heal on whatever has damaged our light in the past. Yes, I I love that. That is resonating with me very deeply. You know, I come at this from the perspective that some of the things that we might need to heal from or some of the things that have been a part of our experience over time, mm-hmm. actually, those things put us in a unique position to mm-hmm. be yeah. a unique beacon for Absolutely. other people who might be going yeah. through very Absolutely. similar sub- yeah. circumstances. Yes. And so, Akanke, what would you say are some of the do's and don'ts of just being a beacon, being the best, the very best beacon that you can be in this moment where you are right now with all your flaws and all the things that you might think might be holding you back? What's the best way to approach being a beacon and move forward? Well, um, I will just say that I ground my understanding in in this journey through life in a paradigm that I call the sacred journey of ascension and it has seven stages and I won't go through all of them, but I will just say that it begins with awareness. So just get into understanding yourself and accept what you see objectively. Like we have to get to know ourselves on a deeper level and accept our imperfections, look at our talents, our strengths, and um, our weaknesses and accept them lovingly with compassion. And from there, move towards the assurance that whatever we need to heal on, whatever challenges we've had in the past have been prescriptive for us. As you said, the things that have challenged us have been prescriptive. This life is part of it is a, a test, the test to strengthen our resiliency, our faith, our trust, and to use that to dive deeper into the nature of our heart, our soul, our light, and then to use those experiences to move higher in life. And that doesn't mean that we will always go high like this all the time. Sometimes we go down and that's part of the test. So to answer your question, we must embrace knowledge of self in order to understand this journey and to live life in a way that we can heal ourselves and to be the healing balm for others in ways that we have learned. So everybody's path is different. What you teach other women is different from what I teach and what Lynn teaches is different from what you teach, et cetera. So I love what you said already our experiences, which I say are prescriptive, mm-hmm. are prescriptive because we're supposed to use them to heal our own life, which is, is a journey in of itself, but also to share. As we heal, we can help others heal. And that doesn't mean we have to get to this stage of perfection. I've arrived, I'm all healed, and now let me heal others. No, whatever we have learned thus far, others can learn as we're learning, even as we're going through our trials, we can still help other people. There's no such thing as perfection. And the things that we're going through, the challenges that we've, and the things that we've learned from those challenges, particularly are tools and lessons that we can share with others who may be going through these things or to prevent them from going through them. So I love, I think we need to make a bumper sticker about that. Like the things that we've gone through, they're tools. That's yeah. all they are. They've they're tools, they're lessons. They've taught us lessons things. And blessings. Yeah. Lessons Lynn, you had some comments surrounding this as well. Would you be kind enough to share with us what your thoughts are? Yeah. I mean, I I basically feel as though people are really drawn to imperfections in others because they make them relatable. Mm-hmm. So and I think that is so, so true. 
our imperfections definitely make us relatable. Our imperfections allow us to be relatable and for people to be able to even see their circumstances in our circumstances. So that's, that's wonderful. I think, you know, how we were talking a little bit about our tech issues. I think we just had one of those. Anything yeah. else that you wanted to share, Lynn? Just, and just, I, I really related to what Akanke said about the fact that, you know, if some people may not feel they are a beacon, but I think they need to recognize that they likely are for someone, whether it is yeah. just a smaller group of people, whether it's someone in their family or community, I think everybody ha- is, is a shining light for someone in the world. And recognizing that in yourself is so important because um, I think that elevates you a little bit and makes you feel better to know that someone is looking at you and, and saying, wow that that person has something to offer me and I admire that. And so, so think about that in the context of who you are and remember that you are someone's beacon. And um, I think what that does is just elevate you and, and make you stronger. Makes you stronger for sure. Akanke, can you share with us don't tell us the whole thing, but just share with us a little bit about your story that you share in our upcoming baby book, Be the Beacon. Sure. Well, my story is about my light getting lit when I first discovered self-discovery at the age of 26. And that was um, quite a journey that has never ended. And one that I was not predisposed to or exposed to before that moment. Um, At 26, I didn't know anything about self-discovery, self-awareness, my thoughts or things, co-creating my life, um, thinking about my thoughts, paying attention to what I pay attention to. I pretty much was just going with the flow, with what was popular, without diving deep. And in 1989, I was invited to an evening seminar. I don't even think I had heard the word seminar back then. Um, And it was my first self-development, self-awareness, new age seminar. Mm -hmm. That was a free evening event that I didn't know what it was about. But when when I left, I was completely lit, illuminated. That's when my light got lit. And, um, and 30 something years later, here I am, um, loving that, appreciating that, and that doorway opened other doorways for me. So it's just, you know, my thing is to help illuminate awareness, because that's the thing that led to all these other doors opening for me. We cannot live life um, truly in a maximizing and actualizing way until we stop to pay attention to what we're paying attention to until we stop and think about our awareness, awareness of ourselves, awareness of life, awareness of culture, awareness of spirituality, awareness in different levels. There are different layers of awareness, but it first comes to stopping to think about what you are paying attention to, thinking about your thoughts, thinking about how you're taking care of your body, thinking about what you're afraid of, thinking about what you love, thinking about what you do, thinking about your who you hang around with, thinking about the quality of your life, the quality of your thoughts, the quality of your heart, the quality of your relationships, and, um, and let that begin to inform you and accept what you see, you know, Everything that that we're, we do in life when we're embracing awareness is not going to be something that we like. We might have things we that we need to change and heal on. And so back then in 1989, I had to um, be confronted with the help of others lovingly, compassionately to see what my Achilles heel was or my inhibitions or the things that I needed to change, how I needed to tweak my thinking in order to create a life that was more empowered, more beautiful, more self-assured, more confident. And so that I could become a brighter beacon. And um, 
thankfully I had people around me who were also doing the same seminars that I started to do who could see my light and to help me see it for myself. And I did the same thing for them. Oftentimes we can't see ourselves the way others can see us. So surround yourself with people who love you, who want the best for you, who can see you in a way that you can't see yourself and have deeper conversations with them so that they can help you grow and you do the same with them. So awareness is the first step and that's what happened to me in, in, in 1989. And here I am today wanting to support others in embracing awareness. And no matter where we are on the journey, because that was th over 30 years ago for me, I am still diving deep into my awareness so that I can continue actualizing until the day I leave this earth. Wonderful. That is such a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that with us. And also, I would invite everybody. It's coming soon. We're 10 days away from the launch of our beautiful book. It is called Be the Beacon. And we're going to be having a fantastic launch event that's called Grow Smarter, Be the Beacon. That's going to be on October 18th and 19th. It's a virtual event, but we're using a platform that's really different from the platforms that we've used in the past to give you more of that feeling with this launch of being live and together in a way that we used to be back in the day. It feels like so long ago, doesn't it? But we're, we're really looking forward to getting together for our launch and to being able to just have a wonderful time together. For people who have not as yet gotten a chance to get their ticket, the link is, of course, growsmarternotharder.com. And you can always get connected with whatever Ladies Power Lunch is putting out at that website. So Akanke, people are going to be watching this, listening to it on the podcast, and they're going to be wanting to know how they can connect with you. What's the best way for people to connect with your offerings? AkankeRashid.com is the site that I have started to develop. So join me there. There's an opt-in form on the homepage and you can register. What's your opt-in? Pardon? What is your opt-in? What is the opt-in that you are offering? I give them a, a gift of affirmations for self-healing and self-love. And that's the beginning of the journey for me. It's... um. It's that's what I offer. Self-healing and self-love. That's beautiful. AkankeRashid.com. Everybody go on over, get your affirmations for this thing that is so important, the self-healing and self-love. I feel as though self-love and self-care have become such buzzwords in the zeitgeist, but I'm not sure if we're appreciating what it really means to have that love and compassion for ourselves and to actually heal ourselves. So I think it's really important that we take some time to head on over and get that free gift from Akanke. Everybody run, don't walk and go get that from Akanke at akankerashid.com. We are right up on time. So I'd love for you to just give us any final words, any final pieces of advice that we can take away with us on our journey? Sure. I will just say what I started out saying that um, we are souls on a journey and part of our mission in life should be to discover the uniqueness of our soul, the uniqueness of our mission, the uniqueness of our assignment that um, has been given to us by the one who creates the souls. And, you know, that I call God, God, and I call God Allah, but they're, they're different names. So, and I'm not, I know that in, um, oftentimes in many spaces, we're afraid to say those words, but the reality is that we are created by, we didn't create ourselves. So discover what the creator put in you and embrace that and share that light because you are a light and you're a light on a journey. And when you get on the other side of this journey, you're going to be asked, what did you do with that light I gave you? So have a good answer for that by discovering it and using it in service to yourself, your family, your community, and in whatever ways you've 
understood or you've come to understand what your light is to be used for. Thank you so much, Davia, for inviting me and for creating the um, the vehicle for us to gather in print, uh, to have an opportunity to be a part of this anthology and for being a beacon yourself and for inspiring other women to, to cultivate their light. I love you and I appreciate all the work that you do through Ladies Power Launch. I'm appreciative and honored to be connected with you. And it's, um, it's been wonderful to have this conversation. And I look forward to the book coming out and uh, sharing it more with others, God willing. Thank you so much, Akanke. Thanks to everybody who joined us over on our Ladies Power Lunch Facebook group. If you are not as yet a member of Ladies Power Lunch, come on over, join us. We have one barrier to entry. You just have to be open to the idea of us supporting each other in an intentional and aligned way. As long as you're open to that, you're absolutely welcome. Thank you, Akanke. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next show. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much, Davia.